Today is going to be a little bit different. We're going to go through all of the popular note keeping options that hackers and pen testers use and rank them from S tier all the way down to D tier. I'll also be showing you how I personally keep notes and keep everything synced and backed up so that I can access them securely from anywhere. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So here are our brave contenders and we'll be rating them on things such as ease of use, features, backups and portability, etc. The first thing you might notice is that a bunch of them are actually just web applications. And this is likely an interesting point because whilst it increases portability, it can potentially impact security. Now, I won't argue if your local files are safer than those hosted by one of these companies. That really comes down to how much you like to click on all of the links. But I've been in situations in the past where I've found confidential information on the internet because an engineer decided the easiest way to share it was via pastebin or a public document. And of course, I can imagine how many pen testers have screenshots of hashes dumped with Mimikatz sitting in their notes. My main point here is whatever you choose, be careful with where you store your notes and make sure that the access control settings are set up appropriately. So our first contender is one of the OGs and often the first one we take on since it's packaged with Kali Linux. Cherry Tree is nice because it encourages us to use a logical hierarchy and stay organized and has a decent range of formatting tools that makes it a little bit more like a Swiss army knife of note keeping applications. The downside is that by default, there's no easy way to sync or access your notes from multiple VMs or physical machines. One thing I should mention though, is that you can easily export to PDF. So if you're taking notes during a pen test and you already have a template set up, you can essentially fill it in as you go. And this can save you a little bit of time as a solo practitioner. The last thing I want to mention is that I have had some issues in the past where my cherry tree file has become corrupt. Now, I tend to be a little bit gung-ho with powering off my VM, so likely it's my own fault, but having done some Googling, I'm not the only one who's run into this issue. So this chance of corruption and losing all of your notes could be a deal breaker in itself. Given its availability, ease of use, but lack of portability, I think I'm going to drop this one into C tier. Not entirely terrible, but not great either. Let's say functional. For a while, I was using Gitbook to take notes since mine tend to get quite messy. And I found that the formatting had just enough flexibility for what I needed, but kind of constrained me enough so that I didn't go off piste on every single page. Now, the main drawback it has is the ludicrously confusing account or ownership model in the I signed up as an individual and then I tried to share stuff and it created an organization. And now my notes are in multiple places and I'm having to handle multiple accounts, which I can't really be bothered to fix whatever happens. For an individual as well, if you want to subscribe, it's kind of expensive, but I get that this was really designed for teams and documentation and not individual note taking. So it's kind of fair play there. I do really like the page structure, formatting tools, and also the ability to easily make documents publicly available as well as collaborate. And you'll find a lot of people who have hosted pen testing notes on Gitbook. So using it for what it was built for, i.e. documentation for technical teams, it would rate higher, but for pen test or study notes, I'm gonna put it in C tier. No, B tier. Let's go with B tier. So next up, we have a tool that has become increasingly talked about in forums and guides, and that is Joplin. It's open source and can be used as a standalone application, but also has a cloud option too. It has a pretty clean UI, and I think I'm a fan of the split edit and preview view. This can definitely come in handy when writing reports or creating notes that might be shared later on. It does also support the heathens that use rich text too you will know who you are. I haven't really gotten around to it yet, but I have considered switching my notes to Joplin at some point. And after testing this out for a little while, I can't think of a reason why Joplin isn't an S tier contender. So I think we will place it there. In the spirit of fairness, I should start off by telling you that I currently use Obsidian to take my notes. I like the fact that it uses Markdown and I use a plugin that syncs it to a private GitHub repository as well. The layout is pretty simple and I'm a fan of the hierarchy on the left and the tabs across the top. Though one thing I don't like is that when I paste images in, they get appended to the hierarchy list and there seems to be no way to hide these. This kind of really irritates me. If you like to link your documents or notes together, then the graph view might be useful to you. But honestly, this is a feature that I thought looked cool when I first started using it, but I've never actually found useful. Simple note taking, easy UI, syncs nicely with GitHub, 
it's free, I'm going to give Obsidian A tier. A relatively new but feature-rich player in the note-keeping and productivity space is Notion, and more recently they've done some cool things like added a AI writing assistant, and you can even become Notion certified. It's nice to see something that's being actively developed and maintained, but is it actually good for pen tests and or study notes? Well, I do like the fact that it uses Markdown as standard, and there's a good reason for this that I mentioned before. My notes tend to be a little bit messy, so having some constraints in the formatting definitely keeps me on track. Notion also has nice support for code, images and templates as well as collaboration and team spaces. There are also integrations with things like GitHub and Slack as well. So what are the downsides? Well, something that applies to all hosted and or cloud platforms is that you're putting a lot of sensitive information into an application that somebody else is responsible for. So we're basically assuming that it's set up in a secure way. The space is only available to people who need access to it. We're happy with the security of the application and the account that we're using to log in is secure. And I can even see in the application a trash icon. So when we delete something, it likely lives on. Now, of course, all of these points don't just apply to Notion, it applies to GitHub, applies to Joplin Cloud, applies to Google Docs. And I don't think it's fair to let it drag it down too much. So let's put Notion in A tier. Now we have Google Docs, which is a great tool that I use in my day-to-day -day work, but let's see if it's a good place to keep our notes. I suppose as long as it doesn't end up like many Google services in the killedbygoogle.com graveyard, it will remain a useful all-around tool accessible from anywhere with an internet connection. It's pretty flexible and supports Markdown, which is nice, and you can easily share documents, export to PDF, and keep notes alongside your other work. I'd say one of the real benefits that I didn't really consider until I started thinking about using it was the ability to have spreadsheets as well. Sometimes tables just don't cut it and the option of dropping in a spreadsheet can be really nice. A couple of things that I would say is a little annoying though is that you have to enable Markdown to be able to use it and I think you need a plugin to get codes to display correctly as well. Overall, I think B tier is fair. The final contender before we go into some honorable mentions. Now, I'm actually a fan of OneNote and the layout, which is surprising since most Microsoft products have awful UI UX. But OneNote is pretty flexible and I like the fact that you can easily keep separation between different notebooks and sharing is fairly straightforward. One downside is that the pages themselves are a little too open maybe. So if you're not careful, you'll have text plastered everywhere. And code block support isn't very good either. Converting your notes into a report is likely to be a big hassle. Overall though, an interesting option to have and generally a good tool, but not what I'd go for when thinking about pen test or study notes. Let's put this one in C tier. Finally, we have some offbeat honorable mentions. First up, we have GitHub, which is a great place to keep your code, but really as far as note keeping goes, it's less than ideal. As a repository tool with its features like GitHub Actions, it would probably be S tier, but as a note keeping tool, I think we're down at B or C tier. Now, I also want to mention KeepNote, which brings back some very old memories. And to be honest, when I checked, the last official release was something like version 0.7 back in 20. 12 and it's just a terrible tool. So let's go with D tier. Dropbox is in a similar situation to GitHub in that it's actually a great tool but not really designed for note keeping. So we're going to put Dropbox into C tier. So that's it for our tier list. And if I missed out your favorite note keeping tool, then feel free to drop it into the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.